You know how every time I put up a video and I say, oh, it's been a really long time. It's been a really long time and I'm sorry. I am. If there's one thing that's been around before literally any of us, it is diets. And now more than ever, it is constantly changing. There is a new name for a diet literally every year. There is the juice cleanse and the no carb and the intermittent fasting and the keto and the list goes on. And if you are new, I can understand why that would be super overwhelming. I do want to start this video off by telling you that I'm not a nutritionist and I'm not going to be giving you any kind of nutritional advice. But from my own uh, journey, I have learned a few things about diets and here's why I think that they have never worked for me and if you're struggling um, here's why they probably are not working for you either reason number one unrealistic expectations you are getting into this diet hoping that you are going to miraculously lose 20 kgs in one month and even if you put yourself through seven days of working out because you think that's what you're going to be doing it's not going to happen. But in all honesty, the only thing that happens is we start a diet, we see no instant results, and then we fail or give up or never decide to take it up ever again until the next New Year's resolution. Stop getting into diets with the hope that you are going to start looking like Katrina Kef within one week's time, your abs are gonna pop out, you're gonna have a butt like Kim Kardashian, it is not going to happen. Good progress takes time. Reason number two, you can no longer keep up with your diet. You have decided that you are going to start a no carb diet while you are the absolute first person to grab a garlic bread every time it presents itself at the table. How are you planning to do this? Let me give you an example. Eight months ago, absolutely over ambitiously unrealistic Kanika decided that she was going to give up on non-veg and meat completely. I told myself that that's it. I saw like five documentaries. This is not for me anymore. I don't want to do harm to animals. So I gave up on it. A little backstory. I have grown up with having meat and non-veg in my house every single day every single meal, every single day. So for somebody like that to completely give up the idea of eating non-veg at all, completely the worst idea. I went to Himachal right before I had decided to give up on meat and I literally only lasted for five months, which is also a shocker because let me tell you, by the third month, I did not think I could go on any longer. And for somebody who does not promote restriction, I was really restricting myself from eating the meat. So five months in, I decided that, you know what? I can no longer curb my desire to eat non-veg and I don't want to be putting myself through this. So I gave up. I went back to my old eating habits and it taught me one thing, that if you decide to take up a challenge that is completely different from your lifestyle, you're not going to be able to keep up with it. Similarly, if you are somebody that loves the Zumba class or likes to go swimming and you are suddenly pushing yourself at the gym just because Kanaka is posting home workouts or gym workouts, it's not going to happen. You cannot keep up with things that you do not personally like, love, are obsessed with is a part of your everyday. Now, while I want to get into this in a separate video, completely in depth, telling you guys about my story, my reason number three is actually a reason that I feel like most of us struggle with, me included, making food the enemy. For my most life, I hated the idea of food. I was somebody that sat looking at my plate every afternoon for lunch and dinner uh, for two hours because I didn't want to eat and I would much rather go down and play cocoa with my friends. So according to me, food was just something I had to eat in order to survive not something that I needed to give my body in order to indirectly play better every day. What I'm trying to say is that we often look at food as punishment or as an obstacle rather than the fact that it is actually going to help us get to our goals faster. 
whether your goal is to gain weight lose weight maintenance anything food is kajol to shahrukh khan it's a non negotiable you have to improve your relationship with food if you want to be able to get to your end goal you have to you just have to which brings me to my next point restriction and deprivation for somebody who gave up meat for 5 months i can tell you that there is nothing worse than restricting yourself from your favorite foods because when you go back or when you slightly miss or you give in to the craving you are going to overdo it when you tell yourself that chocolate is bad food your brain automatically tells you that there is a negative emotion attached to chocolates and it's actually the devil there is no good food bad food this will help me lose weight this will help me gain weight no how you eat your food how much you eat of it now that that is something you can focus on that is something i would encourage you to build a better relationship with but restricting yourself from one specific kind of food because the internet tells you that it's bad for you is not the answer chocolate is great food i love chocolate but if i had to restrict myself from eating a slab of chocolate in the afternoon after my meal trust me when i say this by 5 o'clock i'm going to be down two chocolates restriction leads to binging binging makes you feel like you are demotivated and you are a failure and a loser because you're off track now and you have to start again so rather than doing this entire circle of just a few moments of happiness and then sadness again don't put yourself through it stop restricting yourself from foods that you love that make you happy because what is life if it is not good food diets are a little too goal driven a little too fast which means that they will tell you that do this diet for 30 days and you are going to lose every single gram of fat in your body i'm sorry but what let's say Your sister is getting married in a month, and you want to look like Shishmita Sen in a sari. So you get on a diet. Unfortunately, that is not enough good reason to keep up with the diet. When I started working out, I went to the gym solely because I wanted abs. I thought that having abs would change everything. It would make me more confident, stronger. I would just be it. Turns out in 2 months of working out I realized that getting the abs would not change anything really. Yes, it would give me a a little gratification, make me feel a little better for a couple of seconds, but that's about it. But when I changed my goals because I wanted to be stronger, I wanted to lift heavy, I wanted to feel indestructible. That's when everything changed. I know a lot of you are going to put working out seven days a week at the gym in your New Year's resolution list, and let me tell you that that's not sustainable. I know you. Be a little more realistic. Be a little more sustainable. Look at fitness and health as something that you will have with you for the rest of your life, not something you need to win in two months. My last reason as to why I think most diets fail is because. We're only doing it because the diet culture seems exciting. You're probably roaming around with your girlfriends who are all talking about how they've quit meat or they've quit dairy or they can't have gluten or they don't eat bread anymore and you're feeling a little left out so you decide why not start a diet. Unfortunately, that's not good enough reason either to keep you from actually getting on a diet i know a lot of people that don't even require getting on diets but they will get on diets just because everybody around them is doing it or because instagram makes you feel like it is cool it's not but you know what is cool going to the gym because you want to feel better going to the gym because it makes you happy going to the gym because you're seeing good results over long periods of time and you're showing up consistently for 6 months and more going to a nutritionist asking her what you should be eating what you should not be eating what works for your body and what does not that is cool and that is all from me i loved talking about this reading about this i think now more than ever i know a lot of you are struggling to keep up and since we are almost arriving uh to the new year i hope that you started with probably better intentions better 
um, resolutions a little more sustainable and I hope that in some way this has helped you. If not, I would love to hear uh, your thoughts about it. I know that there are a lot of people that have successfully managed to do diets. So in no way am I saying that there is nobody on this planet who has. But the reason why most people fail is because um, you start a diet and um, you do these absolute extreme things for like a good 30 days. And then once you're done with the diet, you realize that you're back to square one simply because you could no longer keep up with it. So if you are starting a diet, the least you can do is make sure that uh, it falls a little more in line with who you are, the things you do, your personality. Let me know if a diet is something that you've ever done before. Comment down below and I will see you guys in a video, hopefully very soon. Hopefully. Bye. You have no idea how many times I have shot this video. Too many to count. Too many. Maybe Kanika will have vlogmas. Maybe I will finally make the time to have 25 YouTube videos a month. I cannot even think about it. I can barely do one.